What's up, everyone? Welcome to Code Porn, the show that has nothing to do with porn and everything to do with using sexy code to do bad things. Today, we're going to do something really awesome to kick off the first installment of Awesome AOP Tricks. We're going to inject our code into somebody else's assembly. Now, I'm a huge advocate for AOP, and this has to be my favorite thing to do with it. To accomplish this, we're going to use the PostSharp AOP framework, which you can find at PostSharp.net. If you're not familiar with AOP or PostSharp, that's okay because I've written plenty of articles that'll get you started and show you the awesome power of aspects. I provided links to these resources in the video description, so be sure to visit those after the show. Just a quick rundown of PostSharp, it's basically the only compile time AOP framework option available for .NET. It is a commercial product, but they do have community and express editions that are free, so be sure to check those out at PostSharp.net. All right, moving on. So first, let's check out this demo application in ILSpy. It doesn't do anything special, it just prints out some text to the console. But this is going to be our target assembly that we're going to modify. For this particular application, we just want to apply tracing to all of the methods that are in the assembly. I've gone ahead and set up a folder that contains the demo executable, a batch file, as well as a DLL for PostSharp and our provider. The PostSharp assembly is needed because it'll be referenced by the target executable once we apply aspects to it. We'll get back to the provider in a minute. In the batch file, we're making a call to PostSharp directly, giving it the target assembly, our aspect provider, and where we want to output the results. Then we copy the PostSharp and provider assemblies to the output folder, but this is just for our convenience only. So what is an aspect provider? That's a good question. An aspect provider is a type of aspect that provides PostSharp with one or more aspects that should be applied to a given target. It's easier to think about it as being a way to dynamically apply aspects based on conditional logic. Let's switch over to Visual Studio and have a look at what I'm talking about. First, let's look at our tracing aspect. This is what we'll apply to each method inside of the target assembly. It's pretty basic, implementing the I on method boundary aspect interface and providing code for the on entry and on exit methods to print out the name of the method currently being invoked. It's nothing fancy. Now up here is our aspect provider. It's just a class that implements I aspect provider and its single requirement of the provide aspects method. At the top of the class, we've set up an instance of our trace aspect that we'll be giving to PostSharp to apply to each target method. When PostSharp invokes our aspect provider, It'll do so using the provide aspects method and we'll be given an object, which in the case of what we're doing, will be an assembly object representing our demo executable. Using a recursive method, we traverse the assembly and all of its types using regular .NET reflection. For every method found, we tell PostSharp to apply our trace aspect to it. After that, we do the same thing for any subtypes. And that's it. Now back in our folder, I'll run the target app to show you that it hasn't been modified and works as it was written. Now let's run the batch file and see what happens. Okay, PostSharp has done its thing, and now we have files in our output folder. When we run this version of the application, we see not only the original output, but now we see the output generated by our trace aspect when a method is entered and when it exits. We don't see the exit text for the main method at this point because we're still in the main method, sitting at the console.read key line. If you're not impressed at this point, then let's look at something even cooler. Here we have a library that has some methods in it. One is public and another is internal. From our demo project, we can reference the library assembly and make use of its public interface so we can pass in some values and get the computed value back. And when we run this, that's exactly what happens. But we need to compute negative numbers. And if we tried that now, we'd get an exception because the compute method has a set of guard clauses preventing any numbers that are less than one. However, the compute method that we're using now is simply calling down to the internal method, which does not have guard clauses. But we can't access that method because it's internal. Or can we? Of course we can. Let's create a wrapper method and inject it into the library so that we can access the internal method as if it were public. All we need is another aspect and an aspect provider. This aspect provider finds a desired class in the given target assembly, 
which in this case is API. Then we tell PostSharp to apply our aspect. Now our aspect defines a generic func with the specific signature of the target internal method. This would be our delegate to the internal method. Using the import attribute, we tell PostSharp to populate our generic func with a reference to the internal method that we're looking for. Then down here, we have the actual method we want to inject. Inside, we invoke the internal method via our delegate. And this is essentially our wrapper method. Now to tell PostSharp that we want to inject this method, we apply the introduce member attribute to it. And we're not limited to just methods. We can also introduce properties, fields, and events as well. I've set up another folder similar to the demo application folder we used earlier. We have the target DLL, PostSharp assembly, and our aspect provider. With the exception of file names, the batch file is no different than it was before. Let's go ahead and run the process. Once it's done, we can go back into our demo project and reference the newly modified assembly. Now instead of calling the compute method, we can call our wrapper method, which we now have access to. So when we run this, we get back the result we wanted instead of an exception, just like magic. Now you might be thinking to yourself that, well, you can just use reflection to invoke the internal method. You don't really need to go through all this extra work. Yeah, that's true. But if that's what you're thinking, then you're completely missing the whole point, which is that we inserted our code into an assembly that we did not have source code for. Of course, you're not limited to inserting methods and doing tracing. Any aspect that you can write and apply to your own code, you can apply to code that you don't own. And there are plenty of things that you can do with the code you don't own that you wouldn't want to do to your own code. So I'll let you uh, think about that. All right, that's it for this episode. Be sure to subscribe to our channel, follow us on Twitter and Facebook, and visit CodePorn.com when you have nothing better to do. See you next time.